Do you know about, uh, about uh, um, alchemical uh, sexual alchemy? There's 33 vertebrates in your spine. There's 33 years in the life of Jesus. Jesus Christ, yeah. So this, this substance comes from your medulla, makes the tr trip down your spine to your sacrum, which is, the, which is Christ coming down into human form. Yes. And if you don't squander that essence, that sexual essence, it ascends again and goes back up to heaven, which is your thing. It's also the story of Santa Claus. Why he comes down the chimney is because this, this juice or this whatever substance actually passes what's called the claustrum, which is where they got Santa Claus. Uh -huh. So it goes down what the chimney the and back fuck? up the chimney. In the brain, in the uh, cranium, there is the cerebrum. And in the cerebrum, and in particular, the claustrum, the claustrum is sitting right there in the middle of the head, virtually. From the claustrum, there is a secretion, brain fluid. Uh, and this fluid is an oil. And in ancient times, this fluid was called, in Greek, it's called Christos. It's called the Christ. It's this beautiful fluid which uh, comes from the uh, cerebrum and pours down the spinal cord. It goes down the spinal cord and it reaches the sacral plexus, right next door to the sacrum, which are the five second bottom most fused vertebrae bones at the bottom of the spinal column. The bottommost portion of the spinal column is called the coccyx. Then just above that is the sacrum. Five fused bones. So the sacral plexus is connected to the sacrum. And the fluid which comes from the cerebrum pours down the spinal cord and comes to this, the bottommost part of the spinal cord. Now, the claustrum is otherwise known as the holy claustrum, simply because of this beautiful oil, this Christos, that is produced and secreted. You see, the word secret comes from secretion, because this secretion is a secret, and the sacrum is the sacred part of the secret. As the secretion pours down the spinal cord and reaches the sacrum, this is the, um, the marvelous way in which our body has been designed. And the spinal cord is basically just an extension of the brain. It also does thinking. And you see, the holy claustrum is other, otherwise known as the Santa claustrum. You see, because this fluid that goes down to the sacred plexus is a sacred fluid uh, and this is where the story of Santa Claus bringing presents down the chimney comes from. It's a story of physiology and the Bible is a beautiful manual of physiological regeneration. What happens with this fluid is that every month when the moon is in the sign where your son was when you were born, every month there is a germ or a seed planted in the solar plexus, which is just above the uh, sacred sacral plexus. And that germ is the oil, the Christ, which is born in Bethlehem, because the solar plexus is otherwise known as Bethlehem, where the seed where the Christ is born. And that seed, that oil needs to return whence it came in the midbrain. You see, as the oil ascends the spinal cord, the vibration of the oil of the Christ increases. And you see, first of all, the oil is differentiated 
in the pineal gland and the pituitary gland before it is sent down the spinal cord. And the pineal gland is the electric portion and the pituitary gland is the magnetic portion. So the oil is differentiated and it is brought down the spinal cord via the pingala and the ida nerves. These are what is otherwise known as the kundalini and the kundabatha. So it arrives at the sacral plexus and awaits for the germinating of the seed once a month, 12 times a year. And if we are able to transmute that seed and cause it to rise, as it rises in the spinal cord, it eventually reach, reaches the medulla oblongata and the pons and the midbrain and it crosses the va vagus nerve, otherwise known as the pneumogastric nerve. It's a nerve which descends from the brain area, from the pineal and pituitary gland, glands respectively, and it feeds the lungs and the stomach. It's a network of nerves, and this network of nerves is called the tree of life. And you see, the ancients knew that this seed that is born in Bethlehem once a month is the Christ, and that if one were to abstain from sex during that period, that oil and seed would be saved, and it would rise, and it would burst through the heart chakra, through the throat chakra, and eventually the oil would arrive with its higher vibration, because you see at the bottom, the oil has a very low vibratory rate. Whereas with proper practices, meditation, breathing, good eating, and good peaceful behavior, one is able to raise that Christ, that oil, so that it crosses the vagus nerve at the top of this, the uh, spinal column the 33 vertebrae of the spinal column. You see, because the Christ is crucified at 33 years of age. When the oil arrives at the very, very top, there awaiting is the optic thalamus, an egg-shaped organ in the middle of the head. When it crosses this pneumogastric nerve, this is called the crucifixion. The oil is not killed and destroyed, but it is magnified 1,000 fold. And the oil then touches the optic thalamus and for two and a half days remains in a condition that is considered to be dead and then reaches the pineal gland after two and a half days and illuminates the optic thalamus and the pineal gland. The optic thalamus was known as the light of the world by the Egyptians and the Greeks because they knew their, their uh, physiology and anatomy. And they knew that this precious oil which descended from the claustrum, from the cerebrum, and was differentiated in the pineal and pituitary glands and descended the spinal cord, they knew that it would ascend eventually and that the enlightened portion of mankind were able to cause this Christ oil to ascend so that it would um, ascend to the optic thalamus and uh, cause it to be lightened. What in turn happens is that millions of brain cells that were dormant are now awakened. And you see, there are practices and there are things that are very, very detrimental about this oil uh, or that are detrimental to this oil. For instance, overeating and alcohol and sex practiced at the wrong time. These destroy the seed and this is what is known as eating from the tree of life. Because you see, the ancients knew that once the oil is depleted because of riotous living, 
the fleshly organism dies. Death results from using up all of the oil. You see, the oil that descends from the uh, cerebrum is known otherwise as the manna from heaven. You see, because heaven means heaved up. And the head, the cranium, the dome which sits on top of the torso, that was known as the heavens, you see. And the heart area and the heart chakra was known as the Midgard or the Middle Garden. And the generative area was known as Sodom and Gomorrah, the area of desire, animal desire, you see. And otherwise known as Egypt and hell and the world, etc. Whereas the Garden of Eden and the land flowing with milk and honey, that's upstairs. In fact, the pineal gland produces the honey, a secretion known as honey, uh, which has DMT in it, and the pituitary body secretes the milk. This is the milk and honey. And the land flowing with milk and honey is upstairs. This is a sacred secret simply because the secretion which comes from the sacral plexus is one of the most important things that uh, we need to know for physiological regeneration. You see, by saving the seed, one can uh, actually live longer. In fact, the ancients used to live for thousands of years by protecting and keeping this, um, this secret and guarding it. The Egyptians built ascension chambers, pyramids, for this very purpose. And they taught the science of respecting and keeping and guarding and looking after this beautiful oil. And if you know the Gospels well, you will know all the scriptures that are referring to it. You see, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. The light of the world is the optic thalamus. Keep your eye simple, for if your eye is dark, your whole body will be dark. That eye has always been known as the third eye. In fact, it's the spiritual eye. Now, as for the deniers, you see, most churchgoers will be denying this because in their mind, Jesus Christ is a historical person which must return physically in order to save them because they, they cannot save themselves. They need a vicarious third-party saviour. Whereas the opposite is true. And this is what the so-called Apostle Paul was talking about when he referred to the sacred secret of the Christ within, the Christ that dwelleth within. For you see, the kingdom of God is within. It's not without. And in fact, the words of Jesus are pretty clear where it says, do not be looking out there, for the kingdom of God will not come with striking observableness. Don't look here and don't look there, because there will be deceivers saying, oh, there he is, here is the Christ, there is the Christ. Because the process is within. And unless one is able to raise that energy and get out of the bottom chakras, you see, the bottom chakras deal with sexuality, strife, envy, power, greed, wealth, and all of those things. And if one is constantly seeking those things and constantly eating of the fruit of the tree of life, you see those beautiful nerves, the pneumogastric nerve system, they are responsible for bringing the oil back up, those beautiful spiritual presents. And we are the ones who are responsible for channeling that oil, that Christ seed within, so that it eventually is crucified in the middle of the head. You see, the cerebrum is hollowed out and the midbrain and the limbic system at the top of the spinal cord is the holy of holies. And the cerebellum, which sits at the back of the brain, this is otherwise known as the small brain. The cerebrum is associated with the top of the head, Aries, and the cerebellum is associated with Taurus and the left brain, the male left brain. The right brain is the feminine, and it is connected to the cerebrum, Aries, the God brain. You see, we have the God man is the cerebrum, 
the Adam man is the cerebellum. Now, church go, you won't get any of this in church. This is esoteric truth. Exoteric truth denies this and has been perpetuated for the last few thousand years by so-called Christian churches in order to deny and hide the true story of physical regeneration. In the past, people have lived for thousands of years by preserving and conserving this oil and transmuting it so that it um, reaches the optic thalamus. You see, what happens when the oil reaches the optic thalamus is that new blood is generated in the body. Until such time as this process has occurred, we will have old toxic blood in our physical organisms. And in order to regenerate and produce new blood, the oil must be raised to the optic thalamus and healing can occur. And as I said before, the millions of dormant brain cells are reactivated and the heavens, the cerebrum, were awaiting the return of the prodigal son. You see, because we all have these dormant brain cells in our brains. Yes, because they have not returned any of the oil. And in the Bible, this is known as tithing. You see, this is why the Bible says you must return one-tenth to the Lord. Remember, the Lord, the L-O-R-D, refers to the gold. You see, this is how we turn lead into gold. Our spinal cord is like a thermometer. And as the mercury w rises with warmth, the more so with enlightenment and consciousness and knowledge, we are able to raise the condition of this oil. And as it climbs the spine and ascends, it raises its vibration. In fact, when it gets crucified uh, at the top of the spine where the uh, pneumogastric nerve is crossed, this does not mean death. This means, crucifixion means to multiply a thousandfold. And you see, not only is physical regeneration a result of this, but also spiritual regeneration. And one is able to uh, experience the higher mind and clairvoyance. You see, medium, mediumship occurs down in the solar plexus. There are four brains in the human body. The cerebrum, what is otherwise known as the God brain. The cerebellum, which is the man brain. The medulla oblongata, which is responsible for the um, involuntary actions in the body, such as breathing and blood circulation. And the fourth brain is the solar plexus which is more related to the animal instinctive brain, which receives images from the ether, from the air, you see, just like the animals do, and they react correspondingly without reason and logic, instinctively. So, you see, this is why it is so important to raise the oil, so that one can uh, get out of the lower mind. The lower mind is the solar plexus and wrought with um, problems. You see, ascension is within. One ascends to heaven, the heaved up place, the dome of the cerebrum. You see, those two flaps, those hollowed out hemispheres of the cerebrum are otherwise known as the, the uh, cherubim. You see, in the Bible, God says to Moses, you must build the Ark of the Covenant with two cherubim above the Ark, covering over. And inside the Ark shall be placed the manna and the law of God, the two tablets. Well, I'm here to tell you that the optic thalamus is the Ark of the Covenant. And the uh, limbic system and the midbrain, the pons, the medulla oblongata, the pineal gland, these are the holy of holies this is where one needs to return the good oil in the middle of the head there is something known as the hippocampus the hippocampus is the little horse this is the white horse 
that Jesus rides upon. There is um, there is something known as Ammon's horn. Yeah, absolutely, Ammon's horn in the middle of the head. Ammon's horn. Goodness me, would that be uh, in Jesus' name, Ammon, the same dude? Yeah, it would. We have the claustrum, we have the cerebrum, the covering angels, the cherubim, which cover over, because the cerebrum covers over the cerebellum, and the midbrain, and the optic thalamus, and the pineal gland, and the pituitary gland, otherwise known as Joseph and Mary. You see, these two are the ones that are responsible for sending the oil down the spine, down the spinal cord. And uh, they are the ones that, are, that await the return of their son who is born in Bethlehem, the solar plexus, once a month. Once a month when the moon is in the sun sign that you were born under. 